Hey guys, my name is Alex. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 33mm. So in this video I would like to chat about the vintage Royal Oak 33mm that is a piece that many people neglect due to the fact that the case dimension is only 33mm. This is a watch you definitely should consider if you have smaller wrists like mine for instance that measure 16.5 centimeters because this watch wears like a dream on the wrist and I'll tell you why. But before we start to talk about how the watch wears and sits on the wrist, the Royal Oak really doesn't need no further introduction and I'll just give you my two cents on why I like this watch and why I think it should be considered for you as well. And I would like to point out that, you know, the Royal Oak comes in various different sizes. And usually what I see for my personal preference is that people tend to wear a Royal Oak that is way too big for their wrist size. So of course we have the classic 39 millimeter Royal Oak that is also known as the Jumbo, which is the OG Royal Oak. And that is the one I wish I could pull off, but unfortunately I can't. And uh, so I have always had to consider the smaller sizes and the first Royal Oak I had back a couple of years ago was a 36 millimeter version in stainless steel with a quartz movement. And at this time, you know, those watches only cost about three or 4,000 uh, euro. So it was really a good watch for a really good price. And as we all know, today's market is something completely else. And I don't want even to start to get into that because it doesn't matter really. Um, but since I've had both the 36 millimeter vintage version in quartz, um, I always been a bit intrigued by the 33 millimeter version. And that's because basically the difference between the 33 millimeter version and the 36 is not that big that people might think. I'll show you a picture here just between the 33 and the 36 to give you a uh, bit of a hunch on actually how small the difference is. What I like about the 33 millimeter Royal Oak is that it's so thin thanks to the quartz movement that is powering the watch. And I mean, this combination of the thinness and the case proportions that is very important in this case, no pun intended, uh, is that it's basically a jumbo. It gives you the same feeling as the jumbo, but in a smaller package. And that is for me the most essential thing regarding the Royal Oak. What I don't like with the more contemporary versions that measure 37 and also 33 millimeter is that the case proportions are a bit off they are a bit too wide and bulky compared to the vintage references such as this reference is 56175 and it's a SA because it's in steel and yellow gold. Uh, also we have you know the 4100 that is a smaller like 34 35 millimeter version and then we have the one that came after that which I believe is the last you know, good uh, reference of a Royal Oak that's not the Jumbo and that's the 14790. So 14790. Those three references are the ones that I believe people should consider if you have a smaller sized wrist. And for example, the 15450, 37 meter Royal Oak, which is crazy expensive nowadays. Uh, it's a good watch, don't get me wrong, but I don't, for me, it doesn't tick the necessary boxes that a Royal Oak should tick. And that is the wrist presence basically and how it wears on the wrist. I find it a bit too short on the length and a bit too wide and a bit too thick, all right? So yeah, I've said it now, for me, the most 
important thing about the Royal Oak is how it sits on the wrist and it should be slim and it should be flat and it should be, you know, just hug the wrist nicely, no overhang from the lugs or nothing like that. So the 56175 is a watch that started to pick up some, you know, pace at the market. These have been overlooked for many, many, many years and you could pick these up for as little as 2000 euros a couple of years ago. Now we start to see some references starting to rise over 20,000 euro. To give you a bit of a hunch uh, where the market's at, for this particular one, it's around 12,000 euro. It also comes in, for example, tantalum and rose gold, which is a killer combo. Tantalum is a pretty exotic metal that you know, haven't been used within the industry for many years. It's starting to come back. Also, it comes in another killer two-tone combo, which is tantalum and steel. Uh, you have it in full steel, as always, with the Royal Oak. You have it in yellow gold, you have it in white gold, you have it in platinum. So there are many different versions, as uh, is often common with the Royal Oak. I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to say that, guys, if you have smaller wrist, wear a watch that suits your wrist and don't be, I mean, if I rock the 41 millimeter Royal Oak, it just be, you know, I'd look a bit ridiculous in my own opinion, because it doesn't look good when you wear a watch that's too big. So smaller wrist size, try on the 33 millimeter version at least and try on the vintage one because the modern version of the 33 millimeter Royal Oak is not as good as the vintage one. And if you're still not satisfied with how you think it wears on your wrist, go for the 36 millimeter instead. I think many of you would be surprised if you actually, you know, tried on the 33 millimeter and the 36 millimeters, you know, right after each other to see that how they feel and wear on the wrist is not such a big difference. So with that said, I mean, don't be afraid, don't stare yourself blind at the case diameter because that's actually not the whole truth about how a watch sits on the wrist. Um, don't care too much about what everybody else says. So that's just a quick note on this Royal Oak 33 millimeter since I had the chance to borrow one and actually create this video. Uh, yeah, good looking watch great size and wears like a dream. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please hit the thumbs up. And if you loved it, please subscribe to the channel. Ciao.